So if we were to start off with the basics, um, there is nothing to do because Ember creates them for you. Um, yay, Ember, dynamic yay. generation, it's awesome. Um, and really the only time that you need to uh, create a view is when you're wanting to do something very specific, like handle events and, and send that back to uh, your controller to do something awesome uh, or to uh, play around with the behavior of a view uh, or uh, like it says uh, when you want to create reusable components which we'll get to um, a little later tonight. So uh, instead of letting Ember just create a view for us we're going to do something interesting and create a modal. And if you want this can be somewhat interactive. Um, I've got a series of fiddles that I can show you um, which it might be easier to see what's going on if you pull it up for yourself. Uh, can everybody see the URL? Yeah. Do you have a Wi-Fi password? Right there. You would have stashed. Awesome. So while everybody is connecting up, um, I'll explain a little bit what's going to go into this. So we're going to use uh, Twitter Bootstrap um, modal uh, library. And uh, I've pulled in Twitter Bootstrap's CSS, so we get that nice little look. Um, and for external resources, that's all that's on here. Handlebars, Ember, and the Bootstrap mode app. Um, okay. So to uh, make a modal, there's some boilerplate that you're that you need, right, for the bootstrap JavaScript to kick off. And that is here in the HTML section, the um, handlebars template. Uh, it's called it modal, very original. Uh, of course, it's got the necessary classes in there that um, Twitter Bootstrap is looking for, modal, fade in, custom, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then it has uh, so some of the trappings, the close button, um, a, a heading, um, which is bound to um, a name property on the view, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, the actual body of information, um, and then a footer with the cancel and submit button. Um, all, so all of this is just kind of setting up the, the framework that Twitter is going to work with. Um, to kick off this modal, I'm using a link to helper uh, to a to a route. So when you navigate to this route, we're going to open up the the modal view, and that's that's basically what's needed for the template side of things. The application side, the Ember app, pull this up. All right, we have of course um, create the application. And then we're going to create a router and uh, add the modal route to it. And then uh, now we're actually going to create the view, um, give it a name property, and the key here, the, the key to this whole modal thing working is we need to open the modal when the view is inserted into the DOM, and we need to close the modal when the view has uh, been told to destroy itself. Uh, so that's the did insert element and will destroy element, which uh, should be familiar if you've done anything with uh, Cocoa. This kind of comes from the Cocoa roots of Ember, uh, those, those events. So did insert element fires off when the view is actually um, created and um, inserted into the DOM. And the will destroy element is fired off when the view is told to go away and it can be garbage collected, disposed of, basically. Uh, so uh, views have this nice little handy um, helper to the, the jQuery um, itself, the, the jQuery um, handle to itself. That's the, this dollar sign. So I can just grab the actual element of the view and say uh, dot modal show or dot modal hide, and, and it works. Um, and then I'm handling the cancel and submit, the submit event in the route. 
So if you, uh, for those of you new to, new to Ember, Ember gives you uh, models, it gives you views, it gives you controllers, and it gives you routes, which are sort of special controllers, the kind of controllers that are overseeing the, the state of your app or the, the, what URL you're at. Um, so in this case, uh, when we go to the model route, um, Ember is automatically going to um, create the, the view to render that template and stick it in the um, stick it in the outlet of the uh, application template, and so that's what it does. We get clicky clicky, and ooh, a modal um, low resolution. Uh, okay, so that's 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 a basic modal. Um, it's so easy, my kids can do it. <laughs> Any questions so far? Yes, Brian. How many PhDs do your kids hold collectively? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one from Stanford, one from Harvard, and <laughs> third is still. No. <laughs> I have a question, and yeah. feel free to, to disregard it. It might, it might be too. Okay, too then busy. we're moving on. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you give like just a quick rundown of what is Ember? Why? Why Ember? If you want, um, if you don't have time, you, if you want I'll. To I, yeah, I'll handle okay. some of that. Okay, I'll cool. handle some of that. So okay. okay. Maybe so, we yeah, we should have switched. <laughs> mine was more elementary. My bad. Okay. So, okay. I thought mine was going to be really elementary, and but um, then I showed up. <laughs> no, it's uh, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with yeah, you. Yeah, you're this, this, the right. silent majority. Right. Um, so this is this is uh, once you start out with Ember, right? You're letting Ember do a lot of the work for you, um, and this is just starting to dip your toe into uh, taking back control from Ember and kind of <coughs> doing stuff on your own. Um, but not, not going off the deep end or anything. So is there any other, so I know you're using Bootstrap, but other than the CSS, were you using any other JavaScript? Uh, so the requirement of Ember is jQuery. Yeah. So jQuery is running. But no, this isn't Bootstrap's JS, this is your handle. Right. Uh, so jQuery against, against Because you just did, right. you know, modal show and modal hide. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm not even using the entire Bootstrap library. I'm using yeah, this, this guy right here, uh, Bootstrap Modal. Oh, okay. Um, and really, I'm using that because that was on um, the, uh, the CDN JS thing to link in. Okay. Uh, but it just gives me a kind of an uh, enhanced um, modal behavior from, from Bootstrap, but it's not the entire Bootstrap JavaScript <laughs> library. Uh, I am using the entire... Bootstrap CSS, but that was just because I just copied pasted it in. Um, where where was are you declaring the um, the JS for that Bootstrap modal? Just didn't see it. Where's what? Where were you declaring that JS, the JavaScript for the modal? Oh, it's in ex external resources. Yeah, oh. see right over here on the modal external modal resources. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, I, I've added handlebars, um, Ember, ah. and then Bootstrap. So that's the equivalent of just saying you know, script tag. Got it. Pull it in. Um, so this is cool. We've got a modal. Uh, now, what if we want? What if we want two modals? Right. Well, we uh, we maybe make another route and uh, create another view. Uh, we can create another um, template, and that would work. But we've then duplicated everything. We've duplicated the template. We've duplicated the behavior. So we really need some dryfication going on here. Um, we need uh, we need to share uh, the visual elements. We want to share the behavior. Uh, we don't want to do so much duplication. So Ember gives us some ways to do that. One is through layouts, uh, which are really cool. You can create a template, a special kind of template that's going to be a layout. And then multiple views can use the same layout, uh, and they'll put their, their custom, what's different for each view, is going to get spit out into the yield helper. Um, but uh, you put all the stuff that's common to these, to these views um, in the template, and you're not having to declare that in, in multiple places, which is awesome. The other way 
uh, the other thing you can do with views is uh, you can you can reuse their um, their behavior. Um, so uh, just like and I'll go back to the fiddle here. So see how our view app dot modal view equals ember dot view dot extend. Um, you can also extend your own views. It, it, it's kind of like Inception, right? So you can extend a view which extends Ember's view object. So if you've got stuff, uh, if you've got behavior, like we have, we have a specific behavior in the insert element event and the destroy event, and we want that behavior to be the same for all our, our modal views. We want them to pop up when the view is inserted in the DOM. We want them to go away uh, when the view is destroyed. So I have another fiddle here that illustrates this. I'll give you all a second to go through it, or to go to it. Can you read those? Uh, uh, capital Q, capital S, capital Z, lowercase j, m. All right. Um. <coughs> All right. So, the way this is going to work, um, you'll notice very, very similar template as last time because it is the same template as last time. The only difference is um, I'm calling this modal layout instead of just modal to designate that I'm going to be using it as a layout. And uh, modal body now no longer has that, that big lorem ipsum paragraph in it. Instead, it just has a yield helper because I'm going to be putting different stuff in there. Uh, but both modals, I want to have the same look. I want them to have that header with the cancel button. I want them to have the footer with the cancel and submit. That's going to be the same for both modals. Um, the only thing that's going to differ is the body, so I'm going to make this template to reuse it. And then I have two different templates for each modal. So this is the stuff that's different. This is what's going to get injected into the body portion. So the first modal has that lorem ipsum text. The second modal is totally different content. All right, so let's get into the application part, the ember part. So I uh, do ember.application.create, kick things off. Um, I'm in my router. I'm going to find um, a resource. It's a precious resource, my precious. And there's two routes um, that are, are shared. So the way this would look, if, if you were to um, go in a URL, it would be your application domain slash precious slash m1 or slash m2. So there's two modal routes um, that have a common, <coughs> common resource to them. Uh, I'm now declared my common modal view, uh, which is the modal view that we made last time. But what's different is I'm saying, hey, use the modal layout. So um, use the modal layout and uh, have you uh, use this functionality, this behavior for insert element and destroy element. Now, the interesting thing is this view doesn't actually get created. Um, directly, right? So when I go to um, any one of those routes, M1 or M2, uh, this view name does not correspond to uh, the route or the controller that's active. So it's not the one that's going to automatically be created. I need to make those too, which I do right here. So I have a precious M1 view and a precious M2 view. And notice how they extend the common modal view. So I'm going to reuse the behavior of the common view which means they're going to use the layout and the um, insert event and the destroy event. Uh, and they, I, have, I have completely different name properties on each of these views. So they have a different name and they have a different template. They're going to use the same layout and the same uh, behavior. Uh, and then I'm also handling the cancel and submit event on the, uh, the route. The, the route to the precious resource. Um, <coughs> the cool thing about this is I'm also not having to repeat this for 
for uh, the two modals. Um, both uh, both of those events are going to come back to the the parent the parent route. Uh, so you can see that in action. Modal one, ooh, a modal. Modal two, totally different content, uh, but I'm sharing behavior and layout. So that's one way to kind of dry up modal views. Any questions at this point? Yes. How is the view name pressure in one view attached to the resource attack? Is it like Rails where it's very yeah, so and type of case specific? Yeah, so Ember takes inspiration from Cocoa yeah. and Rails. Uh, and so from the Rails side of things, it's very much uh, convention over configuration. So if you name everything just right, it all works together beautifully. Cool. Uh, so these views, right, I've got, I've got the, uh, uh, the, the main route, Precious. And then I have the, uh, that's the resource name. And then M1 is the route view. So it knows that that's the view that goes to um, that route. So if I go to Precious M1, it knows that it wants the Precious M1 view right. just from using the right names. From the nesting view, right, the routes. Yeah, he, here I'm nesting it. So the, the M1 and M2 have a, a parent resource, uh, Precious. Do you ever, I forget exactly, I've been playing around with it a little bit with Ember, and then uh, diagnosing naming problems. Is that ever? Yeah, I misspell things all the time. All the time. Why is nothing showing up? And yeah. Oh, yeah. I left the S off. I that. can't remember if the if the errors were all that helpful. There's a way you can debug it, and you can in the console tell Ember to spit out all the objects that it's created, mm -hmm. and then you might be able to see two objects next to each other with very similar bit styles. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so if you tell it what hash, hash is referring to. How do you do that? Uh, it's like under double underscore lookup, double underscore something like that. It's, I could send you a link with the... With is the it link. in the docs or...? Um, if you search for like debugging Ember, someone put together like a very useful GitHub gist. Okay. But I don't think it's actually in the docs. Did they, they See, that's why <laughs> kind of these meetings. It's kind of like one of these things I don't want you to know about. <laughs> yeah. to be touching it. I forget, forget if they mentioned that in the peep code. The peep code has a couple of debugging options, like uh, printing controller out uh, while you're uh, on screen. Like, there's a lot of ways to print stuff at the screen that yeah. might be helpful and tell you what controller you're currently looking at. And yeah. It'll actually run the debugger statement directly in my templates and um, you can do stuff like that to try to look around and see what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've stepped through a little bit with, with debugging and stuff, but yeah, name, naming stuff is kind of hard. Uh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. it'll tell you that um, there's not a corresponding object that goes with something. You'd be like, why not? Oh, I named it wrong. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Good to know. Yeah. The yield <coughs> is it looking for a data input, or how's that now? Yield, yield is just, um, that's just a helper. So that, that handlebars and Ember knows that um, yield is where the the view that's using the layout is going to display its stuff. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So now I want to talk a little bit about about animating a view. Um, and I got this idea from <coughs> reading the the documents. Uh, on actions, and they have this example where um, you have this you have this view um, that's expanded, uh, expanded or contracted. Um, so the controller has a property and is expanded property, um, and it has an expand action and a contract action. And there's a button in the template that performs that action. So if it's in the expanded state, then the action says uh, run the contract action, and if it's uh, in the not expanded state, then um, the button is wired up to run the um, expand action. And all of that, um, th the only thing that expand and contract are doing is just changing the value of the is expanded property. So it's a simple Boolean if else thing. And if you, if you do this, um, it works, but it's real abrupt, right? You're, you're either 
contracted or expanded and it's pretty much instantaneous and um, uh, it would be nice if there was kind of a smooth little you know an unveiling um, it would look it would look cool so you could do this in uh, and I got another fiddle um, you guys want to go to that uh, capital S capital V lowercase p capital Q capital B uh, you could do this in the JavaScript in the JavaScript layer, um, but uh, and this is kind of non-emberish, but you uh, might want to consider actually doing this in the CSS layer. Um, in fact, I would encourage you to do as much animation with CSS as possible um, because um, animation in JavaScript is going to have to fight with. Uh, the garbage collector, um, whereas the CSS doesn't, and um, the browse in some cases the browser can actually take advantage of hardware acceleration with animations. So if you can, um, CSS is a great way to go. And so we can take that exact same uh, that exact example out of the docs. Um, I have this uh, slide slider. I'm going to render the slider template. Um, this is my slider template, um, and I'm doing something really cool here. Um, I'm using a, a bound attribute. So this div, um, the class, is going to be bound to a property on the controller that is expanded controller. And this syntax says, um, if is expanded is true, then print open as a class. If is expanded is false, then print closed as a class. Uh, and so anytime that property changes on the controller, uh, Ember will um, you know, notify the view which is observing it and the template will respond, which is really cool. Uh, so anyway, that's what it is. And I put a lot of text in there so that there was you know, something to actually show, uh, unveil. So straight out of the docs, if is expanded, then the uh, contract button. Otherwise, the button's going to run the expand action. Uh, the app is super simple. Th there it is. I create the app, uh, and I create a controller for the, the slider. It's expanded <coughs> property, and then the, the two actions, straight out of the docs. So the cool stuff is actually happening here in the CSS. Um, and what I'm doing is... Basically, on panel body, <coughs> I'm defining uh, a, a transition. And of course, I got to use all the browser prefixes and whatnot. Um, but the way a transition works, um, and in this case, I'm saying all, transition all, which means if any property on the selected element, in this case, dot panel dot body, if any one of those property changes, then take the current value and the value that it changed to and uh, you know, animate between them over a period of uh, half a second using this easing function. Um, so it's, it, it's that easy to declare. You can, and you can specify specifically which properties you, um, you want to have animate. In this case, I'm doing everything, which means if the height changes, it's going to take the current height to the new height. It's going to animate that. If the opacity changes, it's going to um, take the current opacity the new opacity is going to animate that. And so I basically then define two states, the dot closed and the dot open state. So when it's closed, the visibility is hidden, its opacity is zero, its height is zero. When it's open, it, I want it to be visible. Um, I give it a, a full opacity uh, and a height of 250 pixels. And I did that so that there'd be a scrollable area. Um, and here you can see it in action. So you click the button and it, it fades in and unwinds. Um, all done on the CSS layer. So took that example straight out of the docs and spruced it up a little bit without having to do anything um, fancy or complicated in the JavaScript layer.